Welcome guys to my channel. Today we are going to continue with our short series on building a settings UI. In the last video, we created this edit profile page. Today, we are going to create this settings page. If you haven't watched part 1 yet, the link will be in the description below, also in a code in the top right corner. As we did last time, before jumping into the code, let's try to identify the main widget that we will be using to create this page. The page starts with an app bar that has only one icon button. Then we have a text widget. After the text, we have two groups of options. The first group starts with a row of an icon and a text widget, then it's followed by a divider. After the divider, we have more rows with text and icon buttons. The second group of options uses practically the same widgets as the first group. The only difference is the widget at the end of each row being a switch instead of an icon. And finally, we have an outlined button to sign out. Now that we have a good idea of the main widgets that we will use to build this design, let's start coding. I have already created the file settings.dart. Now, let's start by creating a stateful widget for the settings page. Then, inside the build method, we'll create the scaffold. Before creating the app bar, let's go back to the edit profile page to implement the navigation from the edit page to the settings page by pressing on the settings icon button. On press navigator of context, push, let's quickly copy and paste the code from the documentation and change my app to settings page. Flutter will automatically import this settings page for us. Now let's navigate to the settings page. Inside this scaffold, we'll add the app bar. As you can see, Flutter automatically added the back button for us. Let's change the background color of the app bar to theme of context scaffold background color and override the leading back button using an icon button widget. Let's also set the elevation of the app bar to 1. I think that's all for the app bar. Now let's build the body of the page. We'll add a container and inside it a list view. Inside the list view, we will first add this text widget. Let's give it some styling. The text is too close to the app bar. Let's give some paddings to the container. We will use the constructor agentset.only to be able to specify exactly where we want to add the paddings. Now, let's create the account options section. We will start with the first row. Inside this row, we will add an icon. Then, a text widget. Let's use the size box widget to create the empty space between the settings text and the row. Let's do the same thing between the icon and the account text. But this time, we will use the width instead of the height. And finally, a divider. We'll give it a height of 15 and a thickness of 2. Let's create the first option. It's a row and inside it a text widget. Followed by an icon. To push this icon to the right, let's use the main axis alignment of the row and set it to space between. As an example, we can add a gesture detector on the row and when the user taps on it, it will show a dialog with the actual options.
For the sake of this tutorial, let's choose an alert dialog. Let's give it a title and for the content, a column of options. Then a flat button to close. On press, navigator of context pop. Let's test it. To create the other options, we could simply copy and paste our row many times. But a better way of doing it is to extract it in a method. Let's do that. We will call it build account option row. This function will be responsible to build one row. The rows are too close to one another. Let's add some paddings. We'll use the edge inset dot symmetry constructor and set its vertical argument to 8. Now we can pass the option title as argument of this new method. Let's refactor the code. All the dialogues are working. Now let's create the first part of the notification section. As you can see, it uses almost the same widgets as for the first row of the account section. This time we will only copy and paste. We need to change the text and the icon. For this option, we will add a text then some styling at first i use the material switch But, as you can see, the material switch is not exactly the one that we have in the design. So, we will use the Cupertino switch instead. The Cupertino switch is very big. Therefore, we will use the transform widget and scale it to 0.7. To push the switch to the end of the row, Let's use the main axis alignment property of the row and set it to space between. As we did before, let's extract this row in a method. We will call it build notification option row. Then we'll create two arguments, the title and a boolean to set the state of the switch. Let's refactor the code. Finally, we will create this button using an outline button widget. Then a text as a child. Let's quickly add a size box for some spacings. Let's center the button using the center widget. Now the button is too small. Let's give it some paddings using the edge inset symmetric horizontal 40. Then we'll change the shape to rounded rectangle border with a border radius circular. That's it guys. Please like and subscribe if you haven't done that yet. This really helps the channel.
and also leave your comments and your suggestions for future videos in the comment section below. See you in the next one.